Hello everybody, welcome to the preview of round 11. We've had one game already tonight. It was the Sydney Swans defeating the Western Bulldogs. Controversially, if you if you don't mind. I think a couple of 50s at the end were a bit unwarranted. Um, but either way, the Sydney Swans maintain their lead on the ladder and go to 10 and 1 um, with the bye coming up next week. They won 102 to 88. Um, Chad Warner kicked four goals. He was the star of the show. Goulden played well. Bont played well until Bevo moved into full forward. But anyway, we'll go into that in a minute. Um, and there's a couple of injuries. Norden may have done his knee. Um, they don't think it might be that serious, but or, you know, like a six to eight week eight weeker. But we'll see how he goes. Richards got out uh, concussed, so those affected a couple of results today. Um, but we'll start with a preview of. Uh, this week's round, or well, better still, let's start off with a quick review of the mid-season draft. All right, so the draft took place throughout the week. Uh, all drops and stuff have been done now. Um, Saligo was pick number one by Bombers Forever. Pick number two was Waterman for Top Guns. I know it was wanted by Gods of Olympus. Be interested to see how Waterman goes once Oscar Allen is back. Um, he, is le he is joint Coleman leader at the moment, but we're interested to see how his role changes. Darcy went third, so obviously Mick was after a four. Another four went and Goran Myers to Maltese Falcons. Maynard as a halfback went to Renegades. Harold Himmelberg as a halfback as well went to Gators Pitchers. Parfit as a tackler went to Second Destroyed, who was dropped this week. Uh, South Guthrie went to Punters Paddock, another halfback. Win Hagar, maybe midfielder to Sugar Daddies. Um, that was the first round. And then obviously a few other people got picked up. Um, as you can tell, Powell, Haywood, Farrell, Tracy, Falwell, Henry, Barras, Keane, Noble, Haynes. Haynes is interesting. He's only played a couple of games, but he's done all right. The Kircher, how long will be injured for? Uh, this one surprised me. Alex Davis played one game, then got dropped and got picked up. Um, Sharp got, well, originally it was Graham, but then got swapped with Sharp. And then a couple um, late late pickups. We had um, Jordan Sweet, James Ace, and Sam Draper, who got dropped and then picked up. And Hugh Greenwood, interesting. He's in and out of that North team. Um, so, yeah, that's a mid-season draft. Um, all the players that were delisted, if we can ugh, scroll up. Um, yeah, see how we go from there. So, that's done. Let's get to a review of a preview of this week's games. All right, so let's start it off with Sugar Daddies, who are first, versus Sickness Droid, who are third. So, it's a first versus third uh, battle. It's Sugar Daddies who are projected for 397.5. Again, Signal Destroy projected for 352.4. Uh, Signal Destroy had no one play and no one loophole tonight. They will loophole Brayshaw tomorrow, it looks like. Whereas Sugar Daddies played um, Bailey Dale, who got 53 as a halfback and up 14% in that one. Was so He's done well because originally he was tagged and obviously broke the tag, but they didn't need it in the end. Um, and he will loophole Sarong tomorrow night as well. So both players loophole and a player tomorrow night. Um, looks like the four lines are set in terms of Wright and Hogan. Danaher versus Petrarca. So pretty good half forward spot there. Utilities have got Oliver and Walsh, but they'll be, both be looking to see how their loopholes go. Uh, the Rucks uh, won't change. That's pretty much who they've got. And Fisher and Kelly in the midfield. Of Hewitt and Wangani Malera. If anyone, probably hear what comes out. Um, Flanders is a halfback against Dale's already played. Then Still and Rao, the two best tacklers, or Robot is probably the best tackler in the game, and then it's Rao and Still. So it should be a high tackling game, this one. Um, and they've obviously had some players play. Norton um, didn't play in this week, which he got lucky. Went off injured. So yeah, uh, Sugar can change it if it's more than six or eight weeks can change it after this week's games but then after that anyone else gets injured bad luck and mcdonald got 23 as a full forward um no position there for him so that's that game there uh, let's move on to the next game 
Uh, we'll just go in order. It's Renegades versus Bombers River. It's fifth versus tenth. Um, Bombers River had had one player play today. Uh, they had a ruck of 36. There may be an error there. I'm pretty sure Yuga Hagen was supposed to be in the team. And I think um, when Michael's changed the team around, I think he's put him out. So we need to figure it out there because Yuga Hagen did get 44 as a full forward. And Yuga Hagen has been um, swapping with Taylor Walker. He's been the full forward most weeks. It's either him or Taylor Walker. And Taylor Walker's in the team as a half forward. So I think there's been an error made there, and that might need to change. Um, but we have to work that out, because if that's the case, then he will be on 80 after two games. Um, and he's got no interchange there either. So perhaps Hugo Hagen was the interchange player. And Mick stuffed it up. That's what might have happened. But we have to work it out. Um, and Renegades have had no one play. They had Blakey tonight, who got 63 as a halfback. More than likely, we'll get that position will get taken up by Blakey as a halfback with 63, and no one else there played tonight. Um, Langford against the Tigers should have a good day out. Uh, Green and Walker as the half forwards. Merritt and Butters utility. Uh, Butters played well the last quarter. Darcy is back in the ruck. How much will he play? How much will he be rested? Be interesting. Um, still, he plays three quarters of a game. Still get 30 hit outs. LDU, Saligo. Saligo's uh, got his first game in the midfield and Martin and Sheasel. Um, I still think Maynard will come out for Blakey and Dunkley's a tackler, which still is a halfback and Wines is a tackler there, who's supposed to be, should be right to play this week. So that's pretty much projections. 336 for Bombers River, um, but but there's a missing the player, so it should realistically should come in. Um, yeah, that needs to be fixed. And Renegades, pretty much prediction, 386.6. With Blakey coming in, we'll probably be close to 400. Uh, next game, um, it's Maltese Falcons, 6th versus Gaze Bitches, 4th. Um, if Maltese Falcons wins, they'll go into the they'll go into the 5. Gaze Bitches loses, they'll drop as low as 7th. Um, could drop as low as 7th. So pretty much projection is 378.5 to 376, so very, very close. And after tonight, it's 398.9 to 399.2. Um, two players, Bont and Grundy, have played for me. Uh, 97, up 7%, and Grundy, 49, up 52%. Whereas Warner kicked four goals tonight, three goals last week, four goals tonight, up 50%, got 61 as a half forward, absolutely fantastic effort. It looks like two players will be loopholed tomorrow night. It'll be Dacos for Maltese Falcons, whereas Sharp will be um, loopholed for Gators Bitches. Other than that, it's two card and forwards, Mackay and Kerno. Um, Miller is a utility at the moment. He may come out for Dacos and probably go to the tackler position. Or Cripps has, Crisp has been very good as a tackler lately. Um, so he'll stay as tackler because he can't be loopholed. So Chris will stay as tackler there. Um, May is a halfback and Andrews is a halfback. Nash is a tackler. The full, the midfielders are Chris, Holmes, Green and Sorko. And Meek, who has been on fire in the ruck, averaging 38.2, um, will be the ruck for Maltese Falcons. So it's projected to be a close one, and I think it will be a close one. So let's move to the next game. It's Punter's Paddock, second of the ladder. Versus Ring Anonymous, who are eighth. Um, pre match projections 389.8 to 390.1. And after tonight, um, it looks like Panthers Paddock have dropped 1%. They're down 389.1 now um, compared to Rangers Anonymous, who have dropped by two points to 388.5. So still should be close. Um, Trelaw was down 1% 59, and Rowbottom was down 3% to 45 as a tackler. Still pretty good as a tackler, mind you. And still pretty good as a midfielder as well, so let's be honest. Um, Fritch and Cameron as a full forwards. Uh, his loophole, sorry, loophole tonight, Richards went out and concussed and had played half a game, got 36 midfielders, so he could have got anything uh, if he didn't get injured. Um, and over here, Adams played, didn't do too much, and McRae played, didn't do too much. So Fritch and Cameron is the full forwards, and uh, Jeremy Cameron is the half forward who's back, and Rosie who's back. So both those players back from injury. Um, I'm not sure why Taranto's there. I 
Is Toronto back? Nick still got him down as injured. And if I look at the teams, if I look at the Richmond team, real quickly on my phone, the teams. Uh, no. Doesn't look like Toronto's back. So I'm not sure, but he's obviously loop hole in Saturday, 4.35. Loop hole in Coniglio. It'll be pretty close, tough loop hole there. I wonder if there's anyone else that could be loopholed. Because that's uh, running in time there. And Ken is not going to be looking at his team to change it if he needs to. But he hasn't really got anyone else. Can loop... Mm, can loophole Darcy more, but there's not much else for him to do. Anyway, um, Dawson as the other utility against West Coast. Gorn and O'Brien in the rucks averaging the same they are. Sinclair and Neil in, in the midfields averaging the same... <laughs> Newman averaging 48, although he has been getting 60 lately against Waston, who's averaging 53, and Atkins as a tackler, averaging 37. Um, there, so that's that team there. Could be a couple of changes with those ones. Um, Canelli, as I said, Canelio is the loophole player for that team there. So, can all need to be on it to make that change if required. Um, yeah, on Saturday. So let's go to the last game. It's Top Guns versus God's Olympus. It's ninth versus seventh. It's a two two uh, teams that were, were were bitching with each other, or one person was bitching around the draft. And that play that mainly caused the issues was Jake Waterman, who was full forward against Adelaide, averaging 43.4. Um, so he's at full forward against Stringer. Um, so both players who picked up in the draft, Stringer against Richmond and, and Waterman, uh, Heaney was down 28% tonight. Um, he got 30, where Gordon was down 5%, got 43 like, quickly, actually. Pre-match projections for Top Guns, 428.1. I just feel that's not right. <laughs> um, surely, you know, Waterman doesn't make that much of a difference to his team, but pre-match projection, 428.1 to 387.1. And after tonight's pre-match projections, 416.5 to 384. So both players just a little bit down. Um... On that one, so both half forwards, 30 and 43. The utility is Anderson, 87.2, and Marshall, who got 149 last week. Um, in the ruck, he's up against Gorn this week, though, so might not get as much. Wits and McInerney in the rucks. Uh, Duggan and Crouch as the midfielders, and Laird and Whitfield as the midfielders. Um, Ryan as the halfback against Collingwood. <laughs> Probably have a field day tomorrow, to be honest. And Sicily is back, and he'll be the half forward, half back um, on Sunday with Drew and Yo, who's also back from injury as the tacklers. Michael will be loopholing Clark tomorrow night, while Top Guns will be loopholing Pendle Berry. Um, who's played? Well, Darcy played, didn't do too much. And over here, Haywood, 24 is a half forward. Lloyd, not too bad, not really that great. And Papley, 36 and a half forward. So it would have been better than he. So that's those games there. So quick look at the fixture. Um, tomorrow night, it's Wally Up versus uh, Collingwood. Then it's North versus, well, I can't remember, Port Adelaide. Um, Carlton versus the Gold Coast on Saturday. So both those games are Saturday, 145. Then the Cats versus the Giants at 4.35 on Saturday. And then it's the one game on the Saturday. It's the Tigers versus the Bombers. Um, however, most people's attention will probably be at the A-League for the Melbourne Victory Grand Final. Uh, and then Sunday at one ten, it's the Hawks versus the Lions. Sunday also, um, at th Sunday 3.20 is Demons versus Saints. And then the Twilight game is Crows versus Eagles. I believe the weather should be all right for all those games. So that'll be it for the preview. Um, good luck to everyone. Hope everyone has a great game. Hope everyone has high scores. Hope everyone wins. Impossible, but you never know. Um, no, you don't know. It's that, You know it's not going to happen. Um, and let's all hope that Melbourne Victory win the grand final this week. Go Victory.